Hey guys, it's super late. I'm in the bathroom. Sorry if there's a lot of echo. Uh, so it's super late and I barely got any video for you guys today. I had to go and film something for someone else. I was hired to go and film a Q&A uh, a &A, and then also I had my class to teach and by the time I got back to my booth I didn't draw anybody and I only drew one kid and it wasn't anything special. So, truth be told, I got nothing for you. So what I'm going to do instead is this is going to be the lesson video. What I've been doing is I've been doing a vlog and a lesson video, a vlog and a lesson video. Here's the lesson video. I hope that you like it. This is for lesson number two and uh, got some really cool, got some really cool positive reviews on it. So I hope that you enjoy it. Uh, this is exaggeration. How to do it. Here you go. Again. So today is my favorite day of the course because it's all about exaggeration. You guys uh, have been wondering about caricature. It's time to learn the part that is the make or break of caricature. And the reason I'm saying it like that is because some of us can't separate our brains enough from our own heads to think in a cartoony form, in a cartoony fashion. And that is going to change the game on whether you're, you're thinking you're able to work as a caricaturist or not. Let's go ahead and kill the light there. All right, so now we should all be able to see my iPad here. We're gonna hop into Procreate. This is an amazing app. If you haven't used Procreate, it's fantastic. Did any of you guys go to Shane's class today? That was a cool class, wasn't it? I, I admit I drew him during his class. It's kind of like listening to a pastor on Sunday and drawing in church, which I do every Sunday. I used to be a pastor, I'm allowed to do that, okay? All right, so this is a caricature of Shane. Uh, if you've seen him walking around, you may notice a couple things about him. He looks like ben Brendan Fraser. I think many of us would agree about that if, you, if you've ever seen The Mummy and a couple other movies and things that he did. Um, things I notice about Shane are his eyes and his mouth. Usually when it comes to caricature, you'll notice one or two key things, key variables in someone's face that helps you decipher what you want to exaggerate on, okay? So I, today what I'm going to do is I want to show you a couple areas that you want to pay attention to as you exaggerate. I want to show you some very basic uh, uh, tones that you're going to use as you're drawing people, okay? Uh, like, like, uh, like a certain nose that you might choose to use, a certain eye that you choose to use, a certain mouth, um, general shape of the mouth, things like that. And then I want to show you in proportion how they're going to adjust to each other, okay? Does that make sense? We're on the same game here? All right. So let's go ahead and hop into another screen here. There we go. All right, now, I'm sitting on this recorder here. Let's see if I can get that out of there. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the basics. Uh, you guys, uh, for those of you who were here yesterday, you already know about the, uh, the obvious proportions of someone's face if they're like Mr. Perfect or Mrs. Perfect. Everything's gonna line up in a very specific way. Uh, like I said, if you didn't see it, check out the last video that we just did, including you folks on YouTube. Now, uh, in saying that, today we're gonna take those proportions and it's time to learn about how each one adjusts each other. Now, we kind of mentioned that already before, but now we're gonna use some, uh, I'm gonna use the term algorithms. We're gonna use some mathematics uh, that will help and I'll try to make it as interesting as possible. Make notes, uh, however you choose to make the notes. All I'm gonna be able to do is show you in a couple drawings uh, on how these things work. I can't really be like, all right, do this, do that, and lead you through these drawings. This one's actually gonna be more of demonstrating some of these things, okay? Can everyone see the screen okay? Can you guys see the screen okay over here? Are you seeing past me okay? Or do you need me to scoot back a little bit? Slide back a little bit, you got it. And drop my remote. Uh, who saw that coming? I kinda did. <clears throat> all right, there we go. All right, let's go ahead and start with uh, some of the key areas that you're gonna first start manipulating, okay? Let's think about the overall shape of the face. Everyone has a different shape of the face. This is what immediately separates us. Now, uh, this gentleman over here and myself, we are well endowed uh, with, with something called a very large beard and you have a nice goatee going on there. And these are obviously change the shape of the face as well. And when you're thinking about these exaggerations and proportions, uh, if you look at my caricature that I have on my booth out in the other room, you may have seen that I take my beard and I like, I like like make it really big and usually my face kind of turns into kind of a banana shape. And, and there's, a, there's a reason for that because you can look at someone's face and you can begin to first assess just the, the, the very simplistic proportion. So all of you guys know about the good old fashioned rectangle. A lot of my artwork starts with the idea of just a basic rectangle. I have a character that I draw called Mr. Lee and the whole design of Mr. Lee all spans off of that rectangle 
shape there. Uh, a lot of you guys, uh, if we maybe have a little bit more weight, if we have a little bit more uh, muscle, uh, it depends on what scenario you're in, you may have a bit more of a pear-shaped face. Now, pear shape can take on multiple por proportions. Uh, you know, pear-shaped face or a gourd-shaped face uh, is, is going to serve a couple different purposes. It's kind of like taking a balloon and blowing it up, but not blowing it up entirely. So you can kind of, and I mean like one of the round balloons, not like one of the folding balloons. And then you can compress it at the top or at the bottom and you can kind of move where the skinny portion is of that gourd of that balloon. Uh, you know, you get the kid who hugs it and you see it go <laughs> out both sides or whatever. It's that kind of idea. Um, and so depending on what you're doing with this gourd kind of look, you may find that someone may have a very small forehead. And if they have a very small forehead, if there's not a lot of space going on around here, uh, like this gentleman over here, I am going to be using all of you as reference. I am not judging anyone, please. I love your faces as they are. You guys know I said that last week as well. But I am going to be utilizing a lot of you guys to demonstrate this. Well, last week. Yeah, okay. You know, I've been here a while. Ah, yeah. So, so this gentleman here and myself right here, we both have a higher raised forehead. Certainly if we have less hair, that forehead rises. And so something... Yeah, exactly. It's all in the back, right? It all sticks in the back. Exactly. Well, and you flying in the skies with your uh, hot air balloon all the time, so your hair went long back a long time ago. So the same idea is that is going to go higher and higher. And if it is an area where it's obvious, if there's a lot of forehead space, you do want to exaggerate that. But like I said, you can either exaggerate to make it ugly or you can exaggerate to make it pretty. And I try to exaggerate to make it pretty. So I will push exaggerations and proportions. Uh, the gentleman sitting next to you also would have a larger forehead. If you look at his hairline, it rides a little higher on the head. And so that would allow also an area of exaggeration. Also, if you look again, uh, it actually looks kind of square with how his hair is around his forehead. It's actually a bit of a square. So I would use a rectangle shape to design the start of his face. All right. So in the same way, you're going to find the opposite. There's several people in here. Uh, this gentleman right here in the blue shirt, he's got his hair pulled down over his face kind of like bangs, if you will, but it makes his forehead look pretty small, you know? And so that's an area where if the forehead is small, then you adjust the bottom of the face, okay? So there's gonna be an area of proportion that you're gonna start with on the face, and you're gonna make these decisions based on that. Um, you over there in the blue shirt, uh, you, uh, short forehead, but your hair is flipped to the side. So you have a larger area of forehead mass up here, less over here. Now, in my opinion, as I look, I, with the smile, I would push the smile, which means I need more space down below. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the forehead space and add to the chin space to make that happen. I mean, you see what I'm saying? So that is the first decision you want to try and make for yourselves as you're moving forward. You look at the person's just overall face. And you can even include their hair. Hair can be an important thing in this decision, too. Uh, if you think about uh, George Lucas. George Lucas, uh, if, you, if you don't know who I'm talking about, he's a guy who created uh, uh, Star Wars. Uh, he's known to have several very interesting features. He has a very large head of hair uh, that, is, uh, that, that stands very much atop his head, uh, and it's very plumage. And, and that is something that, you, that we as artists really try to exaggerate. He also has a double chin, and unfortunately his lower double chin uh, is basically a bullfrog kind of, <laughs> kind of thing. And that is an area of exaggeration that many artists will utilize on him as well. Uh, some people make him ugly. Some people make him look just fine. It depends. But in that area, I would wonder about adding that shape. Is the hair, should it be in addition to what I'm looking at for the basic shape of the face? So that is your choice. You're going you're gonna to decide if the, if the hair adds to the shape or subtracts from the shape, okay? Now, let's go ahead and just keep moving on with this character idea here, and I'm not drawing anyone in particular, but let's go ahead and start with the idea of hair, okay? So when it comes to hair, we're looking for a few things. You want to look at hair in shapes, okay? And we're going to talk about 3D shapes if I can get to it today as much as possible. Uh, 3D shapes, uh, you want to look at it in about three different parts, okay? I'm trying to see if we have any one with, uh, with three different parts of hair per se. Um, not exactly. Um, obviously, I, I love your hair. It's actually working quite well for this too. So it, it, it's, it's tall. It, yeah, duck, duck, you know, whatever. It stands tall so, uh, and, and it rides high. So if I was to do that, I would enjoy making this kind of look airy, you know, and, and I would create this first shape. So she has a first shape. You can kind of see it right here. 
and then the hair kind of comes out the sides, okay? So I would design that first shape area first, okay? And I would be looking about how far that hair comes down over the head. If I'm drawing the gentleman over here in the blue shirt, uh, I'm gonna put the hair on top of his head right here, okay? And so it, and, and if you want the person to, I see a lot of people who try to draw people with short hair and they really struggle with it because they put hair on someone's head and it immediately looks long. And that's because they tried to add far too much body to this area here. If you're trying to make someone's hair look short, if you're trying to make it look like a girl who has her hair pulled back in a ponytail like yours right there, you can see that all the hair is pulled against the scalp as it comes over the back. So you're not changing much of the dynamic of what's going on here. That all stays the same, it stays compressed at the scalp. The adjustments that I'm gonna make are gonna be below, below the area of the scalp like here, okay? And that right there, and now I can go ahead and put like a little ponytail bun kind of to the side, and I've begun creating that shape without over-volumizing. Unless you like to have your hair over-volumized, then you know a way to fix that. So once again, let's keep looking at that, that hairstyle that we had originally going. By the way, what's your name, I'm sorry? Beth, I will try my best to remember. I'm terrible with names. I can remember your face all day long, but names I'm terrible, so I apologize in advance. Um, so we've created the first shape. Look at the people's faces, count how many shapes you think you may see. There may be a, a roll of hair that comes a certain direction, which could be another shape. Beth has a little bit of hair that's coming to the front and to the side, and you could pretty much make this a secondary shape here, kind of like this, okay? And then from that, the hair can hang off and go the other way, and then you can finalize it however you want down below. And, and usually I'll do kind of just strands per se. But with these shapes that you're creating, you're able to create body. The more mass that you add, the more that, that hair shape is going to conform. In the same way with the other side here, the, uh, the hair shape here would probably... It's, it's adding volume here, and it's kind of coming in front of her face just a little bit over here. So we have this other shape here, and then off of that, you can add the extra, okay? Now, obviously, I'm not saying this is her face shape by any means, but you can see how the hair is built off of that and lays around the shape. You're utilizing the shape. Um, how many of you guys have held... Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the idea of 3D shapes. How many of you guys have played with a beach ball, like a beach volleyball? And the, the ones that you have to blow up, and then you don't want to play with it because you've done far too much work trying to blow it up in 90 degree weather. So, and you know how this beach volleyball has colors on it, right? And these colors, you know, like those like blue, green, white, you know, on, on them. So you'll see these colors. Now let me ask you a question. Are these colors colored on the ball like this? Why not? Curves, it's rounded. So we're trying to look at things in 3D, aren't we? Because this isn't going to cut it. So that means that we're having to look at things in a, is it more like this? Yeah. Exactly. So what you're doing is now you've taken a shape that is just a 2D shape, and you've created a 3D form. So as you're looking at someone's face, you have to begin looking at their face in a 3D form. So when we're looking at this general pear shape, we're not looking at a pear shape, are we? We're looking at a 3D form that has the same idea. Think about if you were to color this, kind of like you would color a beach volleyball. There is a, there is a place here. Uh, how many of you know what Earth is, just out of curiosity? Okay, sorry, bad joke. So now you know what an axis is. Okay, so we've heard of the poles, haven't we? The North Pole and the South Pole. Okay, so we have the Earth, and it's on a North Pole and a South Pole. Okay, now there is another pole as well there is another axis that goes in an opposite direction here. It's the equator, okay? So now these two lines make up your basic shape, and you can utilize this to know what shape you're looking at. If I take a couple circles here and I draw a couple of these, this is basic school stuff, but I'm gonna put it in front of you here anyway. If I take these basic shapes and I, maybe I'll do one like this, maybe I'll do one like this, maybe I'll do another one, like this, and maybe we'll go really crazy and do kind of one like all over the place here, kind of like that. We've created four different very rough shapes, but if I drop some eyes and a nose on here, it begins to take a different form. Here's the eyes and here's the nose, and because we're kind of looking up, we might need to reshape the nose because we're looking at it in 3D. 
Okay, same idea with looking down. Maybe we'll have them look down, and then now we're reshaping the nose again because we're looking down. And the same way over here, now we're looking to the side here, kind of like this, all right? And you can see each one of these now looks like a face with only three little shapes on this because we've built it out of a 3D form instead of a 2D form. Are any of you guys kind of getting a little bit excited about this? Because there's, there's a little, that, 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 will, that will change your game in art from here on out. Because now when you're looking at someone or you're looking at a piece of paper, you stop looking at that, three, that piece of paper as a 2D piece of paper. Now it's a 3D space. Now you're working in space and you're molding in space. And that's what makes it so much fun. Uh, now you're taking someone, now when I look at drawing someone with a humongous schnoz, now that schnoz gets to take up an area of space where it can be so big, now it's going to cover over the eyes. Now it's going to cover over things. Now it's going to overlap. Now it's going to create form. And that's what gets really fun. Uh, let's go ahead and talk a little bit here, just a few more things about just in, in general shape. So we mentioned the pear shape, right? So here's that pear shape. And you can change the forehead size, the chin size, depending on what you think needs to be added. The best way to remember this is weight. And I don't mean weight like in how much weight have you gained from being here at FCM. I went for Asian food last night. That did not help at all. But what I mean is there, each one of you guys has a certain amount of weight in your face. And it's not baby fat. It's not anything. There is a natural feeling, a natural movement of your face as you are just standing there. Um, if you guys were to look at me, I'll try and stand in the light here. And we already kind of mentioned this, where's my area of mass? Where is the most? Is it my forehead top or is it the bottom? bottom. Are you including the beard or not? Yes, yes. and that's, that's the right answer. And no is also the right answer. But you all said bottom, right? You all, pretty much everyone said bottom. Okay, that's my area of mass. That's my area of weight. An area of mass is an area that you want to exaggerate. It's an area that you want to push. Um, I would say this gentleman, even though he has a long beard, uh, what would you say his area of mass is in this situation right now? Forehead, right? Everyone said forehead, and that would be absolutely correct because his hair is going wider than his beard hair. So that means his area of mass now sits on the top of his head instead of below. And so when we're looking at that idea in lines of drawing it on the iPad per se, now we can do it in more ways than just obviously a pear shape, because obviously not all people have the pear shape here. What was your name again? Thaddeus. Thaddeus. That's what I thought it was. Uh, everyone, take a look at Thaddeus. What would you say roughly his face shape is off the top of your head? Quick answer. We've got a couple different ones here. All right, now what about the mass with his ears? Okay. Now, oval is the first one that you're going to pick because you've assumed that life is ovular your whole life. Okay? That's just everyone has an oval face. That's what you learned in school. Well, thank you. Um, now, what do you think? If you, were, if you were to try and make his face a bit tighter and kind of think of it in a, in a, in a more exaggerated shape, does it take a new form at all? And if it doesn't, that's okay. I don't expect you all to know right off the top. Perfect. Perfect, exactly. He has a very triangular face, and, and, uh, and, and we'll have some fun with it. I already promised him I'm going to draw him up later. But if I was to draw him up, where's, where's, his, where's his mass? Top, forehead, exactly. So if I'm drawing this young man, I'm going to do it in an upside-down triangle. I think it's a perfect start for him. Now, here's the fun thing. His mass is on the top, so what do you want to exaggerate? I'm not saying exaggerate his forehead. His hair, that standing up plumage he's got right at the front will rock a caricature like no one's business, you know? And then here's the other thing. What else would you exaggerate? Now, this, 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 this is where we have to be careful. This is an area where people may be uncertain of themselves. And now, in, your, in here, let's not be sensitive about stuff about ourselves. We're all beautiful, okay? We've all been created by God, and we all have these things. But what would you exaggerate? His ears, exactly. What would you exaggerate on me? Go for it. Beard. Beard. Why not? What would you exaggerate on him? And, and be honest. 
Forehead, what else? You're missing one thing. Depending, depending on which way he looks, his eyes cross. From left, right eyes paralyzed. Yeah. So. And, and that's the thing. That can either be a beauty mark that you take and you accept, or it's something that you might not like. As you're learning about a person, as you're watching them, if they hide something about themselves, don't include it. Uh, usually women will grow their hair longer to hide their ears. Uh, usually, uh, and, and how many of you would agree with that? Uh, have you seen that from your friends or you know about that as you've talked with each other? And we know you women have some conversations about yourselves and how that works. And us guys do too. Trust me, we do. It's more of a locker room situation, but yeah. Um, so in the, same, in the same way here, you exaggerate the ears for, for our friend here. And I'm going to exaggerate them out. Now, once again, are we trying to make him look good or are we trying to make him look crazy? It depends on what we're going for. I try to be a bit more respectful. I don't think I would go this far. But this right here, if I was to tell you guys, okay, I've drawn a shape. Look in the whole room. Tell me which person that is. Everyone, I think, would immediately point at him. I think that's a fair statement, right? If I, if I draw a shape like this, just like that, where might, where might we go? There might be a couple people, but most likely this gentleman over here, especially if I do this. <laughs> you haven't been called that much lately, have you, sir? No. no. This is the point, though, guys. Look at how little I've done to create a caricature. So when you're sitting down and you begin the idea of a caricature, if you cannot find them in this, then you've worked too hard. You have tried too hard. You have studied too hard. And I guarantee that happens to all of us. Uh, in the world of caricature, I've, I've coined a term, and I call them no faces. Uh, there are times people are going to sit in front of you that, e that are either very, very beautiful and scare you. I've drawn some very beautiful young ladies that are so beautiful, I'm so scared to mess up on them, I overcompensate. And I overcompensate by trying to really focus on their features, and I'm working so hard at it that suddenly I find myself drawing a portrait and not a caricature, and my portrait stinks because I've worked too hard at it. Drawing your family. Drawing people you love. I got to tell you guys, how many of you know uh, John and Juanita? Have any of you guys met John and Juanita? They're in charge of this whole thing. They've been working incredibly diligently to assemble this with their team. Uh, and, and they flew me in to be out here. Uh, I don't know them very well. But in hanging out with Juanita, uh, she is the most adorable thing on the planet, on planet Earth. And, and she has an amazing heart. She, she, she'll treat you like she's your mom in a heartbeat. And here's the problem. I'm supposed to draw them later. But I'm a humongous fan of theirs within a little bit of time that I've gotten to know them. They're going to be a no-face for me. As I draw John and I draw Juanita, I'm going to be very challenged. Drawing strangers is so much easier than drawing your friends. Keep that in mind. It will happen. You will draw no-faces. That's just going to happen. And you have to learn to think, you know what? I don't care how you feel you look. I don't care how I feel you look. I don't care if you're gorgeous. I don't care if you're ugly. I'm here to mess you up in a good way. Let's do this. And just forget everything you're thinking about, forget the focus, and get to work. Play. Our, our job as caricaturists is to play. And if we can't play, move them over to the next artist or tell them, you know what, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with your face, but you, you would love the reason why. I've done that to people. I've done that to people. I would rather not sell them a caricature and not make my 40 or 50 bucks off of them and give them something that I absolutely detest. We don't always have that choice. I've sold so many pieces that I've gone, here you go, you know, and, and they love it. They're so into it, but I'm just like, ah, I know the 600 mistakes I made on that. And there's nothing I can do about that because we have to make a paycheck. But in the same breath, y you don't have to do that. You're not in the business. If you get into the business, you'll learn that fast. But you're not in the business. You can choose to go, you know what? I love you and I would mess you up and not in a good way, and I would much rather bless you without drawing you than vice versa. No one will fault you for that, not one bit. They might go, oh, come on, because they put their trust in you. That's up to you if you're going to allow that to happen or not. All right, so if you, if you can't look at each one person in here and get an immediate idea of the weight of their face and moving on from there, then that's the first struggle you're going to deal with. We've gotten so much done. You've learned so much in this moment. That will change the way you look at everybody from here on out. 
You have not looked at anyone and gone, ah, where's the mass of their face? Now you will, and it will change your game. Uh, secondly from that, now we need to look at people in a cartoony form. Here's, here's the best way to demonstrate this. Uh, what's your favorite cartoon, kids? What's your favorite cartoon that you watch on TV? Roadrunner, okay, Roadrunner is actually a very good uh, choice for that. Um, have you ever seen what a real uh, Roadrunner actually looks like? What a real bird actually looks like? Does it look anything like the Roadrunner? No. Mm-mm. Have you seen what a coyote looks like? Does it look anything like Wile E. Coyote? No. Everything is cartoonized. Everything is adjusted and, 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 and reformed. And if I can make someone's face out of nothing, and this looks like them, I can make some liberties in their face without hurting things. Uh, let me demonstrate. I'm going to show you guys a series of um, caricatures that I drew for a podcast I did a while back. These, these are uh, a series that I did. So it was a podcast I did for my radio station, and I decided that I wanted to try and draw caricatures of people, but I didn't want to use their faces. I, wa I wanted to use their faces. I gave this to this couple. They loved it. They said it looked exactly like them. And I wish I had the original picture. I should have thought about that before I did that. This is off the cuff here. They loved this caricature. I don't call this a caricature. I call this a cartoon because I didn't use their face in this. But it's still a spitting image of them. And I have tons of these uh, of, of people that I've drawn. And if you look... I didn't even give him eyes. I gave him dots. And then I reshaped how he's looking with a single line. His nose? Where's a nostril? There's no nostrils on that thing. And yet it's the spitting image of him. And that's the thing that you need to keep in mind. As long as you have the key elements of the roadmap of the face, and you have the next step I'm going to teach you here in just a second, you're going to be going a long ways. It's still going to take practice. You're still going to look at most of the people around you and go, there are no face. That's probably going to happen for a long time. But if you're willing to loosen up, think, I want to turn you into a cartoon. What's my favorite cartoon? What would you look like on that cartoon? Go for it. Try and draw them in that cartoon face. And that's exactly uh, what I ended up doing. Oops, didn't mean to close out of that. Let me see if there's anything else here that would kind of help that idea. And let, let, let me show you this real quick here. This is the same one I showed you guys yesterday. Okay. This piece right here. Oops, sorry. It'll turn. There we go. Um, is that a human? But, do you, well, okay, it's an angel, right? We know it's an angel. But is that a human body by any means? But do we consider it a human? Once again, that's an area of exaggeration. There, you will never, if you find a person like this on Earth, they're probably an alien. But in the same scenario, we look at this and we go, that's a human in cartoon form. And look at how much liberty I took. These guys don't have nipples. <laughs> they don't have necks. They don't have anything. They're just a egg with arms and legs. Okay, so th that's, that's the whole theory I'm going for here. That's what I'm trying to teach you guys, is that you can take so many liberties in caricature as long as you've gotten the roadmap started. Let me show you a couple extra tricks now. Uh, I don't know how we're doing on time. I... Yeah, no, that's okay. I, I love that I got you spellbound like that. I will keep that. All right, uh, let's, whoops, sorry, that's not the one I meant to grab. I meant to make a new canvas over here. Here we go. All right, boop. Okay, so let's take a look at some things that we can do uh, to 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Oh, boy. All right, let's go ahead and start looking at the idea of, of how you're going to adjust things. So what do we say first? We've already said that you're going to adjust the forehead to the base, and we're looking at that center of mass. Uh, when it comes to looking at someone's face and begin looking inside the face. We know how to make a caricature of someone of the outside of their face. Now let's look at the inside. There's a couple features that I teach on YouTube that, uh, that uh, people seem to be okay with. One of them is this. This is an upside down triangle, okay? And then the other one is this. It's the letter T, because I am that narcissistic. All right, they both serve the same purpose and a different purpose at the same time. If I was to utilize these to look at someone's face, 
I'm looking at their eyes and their nose. Both of these would be used to the, for the eyes and the nose. Uh, I call one the T in the face. Uh, and this helps with knowing what direction their eyes are facing. And the top one also helps with the basic mass of where they all sit. Uh, so let me show you what I mean. Someone who I would utilize this on, their nose, let me change my color here so that we kind of separate this out here a little bit. Hopefully it'll make some sense. The nose will sit, everyone see that okay, that brown? Is that an okay color for you guys? Um, I'm having a hard time seeing it on my screen. The nose is going to sit in this area, okay? And it's going to come up here like this. So what we'll call that the nose area here. And then the, eye, the eyebrow is going to sit on top of this. And your eye is going to sit somewhere in this gap here. So what you're doing is you're utilizing this shape to measure someone's face. Uh, you know how you see a lot of artists go, take your pencil, hold it like this, hold it like this, and, and use your pencil as a measuring device for what you're drawing? Well, that's basically what we're doing here. So I'll look at someone's face, and I will choose how deep or how not deep that triangle is. If the triangle is deep, if the triangle actually, well, let's, let's do this. If the triangle is wide, that probably means that the nose has more mass on the bottom, once again, and that the eyes are going to sit further apart on the face and the eyebrows. The eyebrows are a completely different element, but when it comes to the nose and the eyes, you can usually make some pretty important decisions with that shape just like that. And if you remember our proper perspective yesterday, remember that the eyes line up with the outside of the nostrils. Some people are different, some people don't have that. Uh, African American culture, uh, their noses can be quite a lot larger uh, than that. And that's what you're looking for. You're looking for broken areas of perspective. African American culture, that, that nostril can come way out beyond. And that's perfect. That will help you find their, their race. And it'll help you find that match. And that's really important. If you ever work at Disney, you're drawing Grecian, you're drawing Asian, you're drawing Western, you're drawing everyone under the Brazilian, and everyone has a different landmark of the face that's going to be really important. Okay, but that, that shape will kind of push the eyes further apart and make the nose a lot wider and also push the nose up into the eyes. Okay, we get that idea? The same idea with this longer one. What's going to happen here is that the nose is going to be much sharper idea here, kind of like an arrow. And the eyes could be much closer together and sometimes much smaller, and which would also mean it has a much smaller uh, bridge in the middle of the eyes. Okay, And each one of these is going to cause uh, issues with the other part of the face. But just starting with this is going to make a humongous help. You're just looking, you're looking at someone's face and you're going, okay, what, bit, what kind of triangle am I seeing right here in this moment from this eyebrow to this eyebrow to the bottom of the nose? What kind of shape am I seeing there? Okay. So now if we move on to the T in the face, do you realize that some people's eyes don't go like this? Okay, most people's eyes aren't like this. Most people's eyes are slightly slanted like this. Okay, now if you're Asian, it's even more. If you are, um, if you are someone else who maybe has seen a couple years, your face has aged a little bit, your eye will turn the opposite direction. Usually if your eye turns the opposite direction, you might have bags under the eyes. That's, that's, very, uh, that's very often a thing. So what we do with this T on the face here is now we're doing pretty much the same thing that this is going on, but we're looking at mass. So now we're looking at the size of the nose. Is the nose sitting this wide? Or is our T enclosed? Is it not a square T? Maybe it's more of this kind of T. Maybe it seems to come in and make a smaller T here because the nose is a smaller mass. In the same way with the eyes, uh, the, the T might not be a T anymore. Maybe it's more of a Y. Okay, if you're finding someone that seems to have really tall standing eyebrows and they seem really sharp and, and edgy and they seem to come down to a point, maybe that T is turning more into a Y shape. Okay, and within this new form that we've just created one way or another, you can look at the eyes and can you go, okay, are the eyes straight across? Are they slanted down or are they slanted the opposite direction? Now, here's the cool thing. Uh, when it comes to eyes, it's really easy to know how to draw an eye. The outside of the eye will always be higher than the inside of the eye, okay? This whole thing that you learned in school, this whole thing is a farce. That is a complete lie. You will not have an eye that looks like that form.
No one has that I. This is always higher than this point, okay? Now, where we start using slants is how much. If it's more Asian, then you'll find that that can ride much, much higher, okay? And there can be less eye, uh, there can be less eyelid, okay? And usually with the Asian culture, there is no eyelid. The eyelid sits so low that it's null and void. Uh, if it's someone who has the opposite idea, and it's actually it seems, it would seem like the eye sits the opposite direction, like this, then usually you'll find that they have a bit more of a bag over the top of their eye and a bag under their eye. Suddenly that looks like someone slightly aged, doesn't it? And, and that you will find this all over the place, okay? Okay, you want an inside hint? If you see John walking around, he's wearing a green shirt right now, uh, and it's, uh, it's a bit of a um, uh, Hawaiian shirt. Take a look at his eyes. I attest that it, they look slightly more like this. He looks a little sleepy, okay? <laughs> John uh, John Swamley. Uh, so, like I said, just look, just look for, just look for the the green Hawaiian shirt. He might be pulling around a red cart, and his eyes look just a little bit more sleepy. He's not. He's actually super invigorating and super exciting. But this eye shape might be a bit more of his style. Okay. Now, th this simple little decision that you make will make a lot of difference in your caricature. What is that? slant in those eyes, okay? Keep that in mind. And when you're doing that, that means it's gonna affect the eyebrow, it's gonna affect the eye lids, you know, is there a bag under the eye, and all of that, so on and so forth. I think you get the idea. I'm running out of time fast. I really want to tell you a little bit more. I might need to push this lesson a bit more into tomorrow uh, instead of uh, going on with the watercolor caricature type stuff I was going to do. Um, but do you guys have any questions for me before we run out of time since we're kind of uh, running a little shallow? I'm sure you might have a couple and I'm happy to answer them. Anything so far? I know I overloaded you with a lot of info. An hour is a very short amount of time. No, we're doing good? I got, I got the king class here. I'm happy with this. All right, so let's, let's play a little bit more, guys. Um, let's, let me show you a couple of other neat little tricks that you can do with the face in the last couple of minutes that we have. Uh, since I got class, the best class in the whole church here, I'm happy about that. Uh, let's let's take a look at this. Uh, we're going to go ahead and build out a long face, okay? So this long face, and you're welcome to follow along with me if you can see your paper. I know it's dark. This long face is going to be adjusted in a couple different ways, all right? First thing that we want to do is decide if the eyes are closer together. All right, now, if the eyes are closer together, that does something to the nose, right? So I showed you the idea of the 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 um, the, the upside down rect uh, the triangle. Okay, so let's look at it like this though. If I put a pulley right here on someone's face, and I put another pulley right here on someone's face, and I string a rope coming down like this. Okay, and if if I kept that pulley really really small, and I put like an eye on this side, an eye on this side, and the nose here and I take the eyes and I pull them further apart, what happens to the nose? It goes up, right? If I bring the eyes closer together, what happens to the nose? It goes down, exactly. So in that same way, uh, now we've brought the nose down, now we have to, that affects other things. If we're gonna bring the nose down, now we have some pulley systems, and I gotta remember how I do this here. If we have the mouth here, and okay, all of you guys, take your finger, Put it right here between your nose and your mouth. Do you have like a little dimple there? Okay, that dimple uh, shows up on more pe uh, some people more than others. Okay, uh, and some people seem to have a lot of mass right there. Remember how we talked about the muzzle yesterday? Okay, so this mass right here uh, and the bottom of the chin is kind of like another pulley system. Okay, I think if I'm if I'm thinking of this correctly, I think the pulley system would do something like this. So you're going to hook that pulley system upside down to the chin and to the mouth. So if I take the pulley system and I pull it apart, uh, basically, if I take the chin roughly and I pull it down, what am I doing to the mouth? Okay, and the same the opposite direction. But here's the thing, you think that sounds right, right? <laughs> it's actually wrong. If I pull the chin down, I know it sounds weird. If I pull the chin down, I'm gonna push the lips up into the nose. I know that sounds weird. And if I pull, push the chin up, I'm gonna pull the mouth down towards the chin. 
and I know that sounds weird, but let me show you how this works. Let me show you the math. I wanted to kind of screw you up on purpose. So if I, if I, if I draw a nose here, okay, I'm trying to draw on pretty bulky stuff so you guys can see this okay. If I put the mouth down here, and I have the, the divot there, the chin is actually going to sit really close, in most cases, to that mouth. If I go the opposite direction with this, and I draw the nose here, and I'll try to make it look pretty much the same. If I put the mouth way up here, look at what it does to the mass of the chin. Does that make sense? You see how that did that? And that is a really quick way to find your caricature form. Uh, you can very quickly decide who someone is by looking at the gap between their nose and their mouth. That is a fun little fact right there. And now it's not always the same way you might choose to exaggerate differently, but that is a really great technique to finding out someone's face. The same way as using the triangle uh, around, the, around here like this, you can do the exact same thing here with this mass, and it's super fun. Okay, it's a great way to start finding those likenesses. Okay, uh, I got 250, well, 452 here, so I got like eight minutes here. Um, let me see here. There was there was another one I was going to think of. Hang on, I got the chin, I got the eyes, I got the mask there. Oh, who wants to learn my fake eyes? All right, so fake eyes are super helpful because you might find some people, some kids don't sit still. You may find some babies prefer to sleep while you're drawing them, which I've done in my career, quite a few of them, which is hilarious. So we have to fake up some eyes, okay? Let's take a look at what I call my Disney princess eyes, even though they're mine. Yeah, they're not Disney. I invented them in Disney. How about that? And actually, do I have them? I don't know. Yes, I do have them here. Let me open up Shane again here. Take a look at these eyes. Those aren't exactly human eyes. Okay, and I'll, I'll show you why they're not. Let's go ahead and jump over into another one here. Everything that we've been drawing so far, we've been drawing straightforward, but I attest that there is a much better way to draw caricature. If you draw the face straightforward, you're having to do everything in 2D and proportion and symmetry, and it stinks. Okay, uh, so that means if I draw someone's eye over here like this, uh, I might be a little scared to then draw their other eye over here like this to try to get that symmetry. You know what I'm saying? It stinks. So you ready for my trick? My trick is we draw everyone in a three quarters perspective. And let me show you how that works, okay? So instead, and trust me, it's actually easier to draw like this than it is to draw straightforward. So you know how we took that, uh, that, uh, that ball and we turned it so it was looking to the side or looking whatever direction we want? So let's take an oval and do the same thing. I'm going to do this very quickly since I'm running out of time very fast. So, so pay attention closely because I'm going to race through this and I'm going to draw probably me because I'm a narcissist. But in, in this moment, I'm going to race through here and I'm going to show you how I draw someone in this moment. I'm going to look at a nose and I'm immediately going to begin shaping off that nose off of the face. Thinking about it like a shape coming off of the face, okay? So this is now a form expanding outward. If I was to try and draw this as a form coming off of that, I can do it kind of like this, and it would be roughly like a triangle coming off of that. Does everyone see that okay? Does it look like it's kind of popping off of that? All right, now right below that I can go ahead and draw in the mouth, and I'm roughly kind of considering where the eyes are going to sit. It's not going to be perfect by any means, but knowing that, now I kind of know where I need to put my iris per se in this kind of area here. All right, on the side of the face, what I do is I draw an arrow. So if I was to draw an arrow right here, kind of like this, just like that, pointing at the eye, right there I've created my, uh, my brow point, and I've created my cheekbone, okay? That's another really great trick. So depending on how much the mass is of the cheekbones, uh, this was answering Thaddeus's question yesterday. You can build up that form, uh, whether they have a very heavy brow or whether they have no brow at all. It's a very useful tool, okay? So now we've built out this part here. We can take this chin this way. Now, if you look, I've brought this mouth pretty high up, and this chin is pretty far down. So I'm, I'm doing that whole up and down compression thing going on here, all right? Here's the Disney princess eyes, folks. This is the best part. It's three lines. Are you ready? First line, 
is going to be your eyelashes on the top. Second line, remember that your eyes aren't always connected as dots, okay? Your eyes, your eyes aren't always a sharp point on the end. If I turn my eyes far enough to one side, you can see the roundness, the round circle of my eyeball, right? You're seeing exactly what I'm saying there. So in the same way, that's what I'm going to do here, okay? That's the roundness of the eyeball there. And then, you know how I was saying how I like to squish the cheeks up underneath someone's eyes so they're always looking happy? I can do that right here in this moment just like this, okay? Now, with this shape that I've drawn right here, if you want to think about it, that right there is my, my tear duct on this side of the eye. That was a breeze to do. That was three lines to create that. Now, all I got to do is choose where I put my, eye, my iris and my pupil. And right there, I got an eyeball. Three shapes, okay, isn't that nifty? It's a breeze. And then if you notice that they might have a little bit of a, uh, a, a, a um, what am I thinking of, an eyelid. You can put that on top. If they have any kind of uh, a bag under the eye, you can do that. Maybe you want them to look really old. You can add in a couple lines here, like kind of like that. And next thing you know, that looks pretty aged. That's all it takes for the Disney princess eyes. And here's the best thing. Check this out. I'm going to back this up just a couple bits. Okay. I'm going to, oh, this might take a little longer than I hate to admit. Uh, let's see here. I did not plan this out as well as I wanted to. I could literally take this eye right here and I can copy it. Is there a duplicate button here? There we go, I think. And I can literally copy that. And let's see if it'll move for me. There we go. And I can pretty much put it over here. Here's the difference though. I'm gonna shrink it down because we're in perspective, which means one's gonna be a bit smaller than the other. And then I'm gonna remove the tear duct on the other side and just make a couple little changes. And it basically looks like it fits. That's the cool thing. So when I draw someone's eyes, I love doing three-fourths perspective because literally I can go, okay, here we go. Here's this. There's the first eye right here. And then here's the second one doing the exact same form. Here's the outside right here. And there's the second eye. Same shape. And you can use that on anyone. Anyone and everyone. The only time that you might want to consider doing slightly different if someone's a little older or they have a triangle eyeball. And triangle eyeball is more like this. Triangle eyeball kind of slants down. This is usually for older people, and the shape's a bit more like this, and their eyebrow, their eyelid is basically folding over the eye a bit more, and usually they'll have a bit more of a bag under the eye. But guess what? Same technique. Works just fine on both sides. That's my Disney princess eyes. And he takes a bow, drops his microphone, boom. Uh, that's, I think, that's literally all I have time for for today. But, uh... Trust me, I've made thousands of dollars on these stupid little eyeballs. They are yours to enjoy. Please have fun with them. You can draw anyone with these eyes. Just learn the little things that make that person's eyes different. Their pupil, their iris may be a different size inside of that shape, inside of this shape. So someone may actually have a very tiny iris and pupil inside of there or they may have it much larger and it takes up more of the white mass. It's called the negative space of the eye. That's really what you're trying to pay attention to when you're drawing eye mass. How much white is in the eye after you've drawn that shape and form. Okay? Did you enjoy that? Yeah. Sweet. Uh, thank you. All right, so tomorrow we're going, I think, I think tomorrow I'm going to change up my lesson plan a little bit. I wanted to show you guys a little bit of the, um, I wanted to show you guys a little bit of actually drawing on paper. Um, and we might still do that, but I want to go ahead and continue this course uh, on to that lesson. So maybe I'm still going to decide if I use my iPad tomorrow. Uh, I, well, no, we got too many people here. Yeah, I'll use my iPad because I was going to say we could all crowd around together, but that's a little bit too much. So I'll bring my iPad. We will continue working on this tomorrow because there's a lot more to cover to get this exaggeration in 3D form. But thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys. That was fun.